Hello and welcome to the Music Tech Guru Guide to Recreating the Model by Kraftwerk. This is a classic tune that was written in 1978 and went to the top of the UK charts in 1982, which had formed part of the rise of synth pop in popular music. Most of the sounds come from classic old synthesizers such as the Arp Odyssey and Mini Moog, and there's some custom made equipment that's used to play the drums and percussion. As you can hear, it is possible to recreate these sounds using the synths available in Logic Line, and that's what we'll have a quick look at now. Okay, we're just going to go through it one by one. Let's start with the kick drum, and this is what it sounds like. Okay, I've used the Ultra Beat, and it's just the basic setting and uh, kick drum. I may have changed something here on the ADSR envelope, but have a look at that. We are using a peak EQ here, which emphasizes the click in the kick drum track. And then that's finished off with some compression. Quite a heavy compression here. We can see it's three to one on the ratio and the threshold is set quite low. That's to really kind of squash the sound and make it sound more kind of clicky and electronic. Then let's move on to the rim shot. Okay, so first thing, lots of compression again, like two to one, making it sound very clicky. What we're using here, the ultra beat, and I've definitely changed the ADSR envelope to make it a bit tighter. Uh, as you can hear, you can hear there's a kind of reverb on it. I'm using a bus here, a bus which connects to silver verb. This is a very simple metallic reverb, which is quite effective. And following on from the compression, we use a little bit of distortion. If I just bypass it, that's without the distortion. That's with the distortion. So you see, it really does add the tone and you can mess around with this tone fu function here to emphasize the different aspects of the tonal structure. And then we finish that off with a channel EQ. Again, peaking around between five and 10K here uh, to get lots and lots of top end to that. So that's basically the drums. Let's start again and let's listen to the bass. Well, this is a mini Moog bass and what I've just used is an old school bass here. I've just messed around again with the ADSR envelope with the re-release time. You can change the cutoff frequency here as well to get it just right, but it's got a bouncy like feel to it, which is good. You can also change the attack time just to get rid of a click at the beginning of the note. See, let's get rid of that. So that's a very simple, straightforward thing to do, and uh, I haven't actually used any EQ, it's just there, just in case. Right, so let's have a listen to Synth 1. <laughs> This is the major synth, and there's a lot going on here. I'm using the ES2, and we start off by just using the Analog Saw 3 Oscillator Tutorial Preset, because that basically gives you three saw waves, which is what you want. And uh, if we have a look at the synthesizer in more detail, we can see up here in the top left, we've got the analog. This changes randomly the pitch of the sound, the oscillators, so it gives it a more analog, old school feel. And we've got another important part here is the filter. And uh, we can see here, we've got two filter cutoff points. We've got this blended all the way to the right. And this cutoff is set to about 10 o'clock on the scale. So that's the basic sound. Um, look down here in the middle, we have the router section. And this is where you can assign different envelopes or modulation effects to different aspects of the of the synthesizer so here we have envelope two which is situated down here is affecting cutoff two which is here by this amount so this envelope here is affecting the filter cutoff when you play it's an adsr envelope so you have your attack decay sustain release time and this is used to affect, to create that wow sound in this, in this instance. So if we move on, we've got channel EQ, just a little bit of a peak between two and five K, 
bit of overdrive to add grit not very much four and a half db gain and then again you can mess around with the uh, frequency range what's that effect obviously a bit of compression not too much this time because you lose the wow effect if you put too much on and then an echo delay which is got quite a low wet level here set to one eighth and that adds a sort of space so let's have a listen to that again That also has the synth support line, which is basically the duplicated track, but I've just cut loads and loads of the top end out and peaked around 500 hertz, and that will give it a slightly different tone. So if you have a listen to this. It doesn't sound like much, but you play it with the real track. And it adds that fifth that you get in the original. Okay, so now we move on to the percussive kind of hi-hat synth, if you like, and we're using another tutorial setting, but this time using the EXS24 sampler. Um, first thing you need to do is mess around with the release time yet again. Too short. Change the drive. So, the most important thing is to get the, the notes that you actually play quite short. You can see here, they're all the same. So I've used like, um, I've used the transport function in here and I've made them all the same length and then I've shortened them by exactly the same amount. So they're identical lengths. That's very important. Then you've got uh, the EQ that I put on there. I've cut loads of the bottom ends. If you hear it without that, it's all that bottom end stuff. Get rid of it. And then a chorus effect, which adds a little bit of movement in the pitch. And a space designer, which adds a little bit of space. 1.3 second soft plate in this case. And I've just altered the wet dry level here. And then we come to synth three and let's just uh, have a listen to this. I've used an ES2 here and the narrow timbre sound. And I haven't had to do much to it. I've just had to affect the cutoffs here and mess with the ADSR envelope to make it sound exactly how I want. The main thing is to cut off some of the top end again to make it duller. Use it lots of echo this time, a bit more wet level. And finish off with compression, which is sort of medium compression, two to one ratio, quite high threshold. So that's that one. And then we move on to the the narrow the other synth which is again it's, it's the same synth as the uh synth three but i've just affected it slightly differently by changing the attack time and the release times opened up the filter a little bit and that's what this sounds like there you go and let's move on to the mellotron choir that comes in with uh synth three so let's have a listen to that. I've tried to recreate the original Mellotron choir sound well, just by using the EXS24 church choir and then put a phaser on it to give it some movement, that whoosh kind of sound. And then a radical EQ, which is essentially a band pass. If I take that off, you can hear it without. Quite what wide spectrum of sound there to make it sound very limited because it's trying to emulate tape loops. So there'd be lots of hiss, lots of noise there. And that's that. Okay, so for the vocal, what we've done is used the ES1 poly hook and it's pretty straightforward. If you have a look at it here, let's just get that in the right place. The important thing to do here is to make sure that it sounds very robotic because it was a very robotic sounding man. Okay, if we just find the right bit, here we go. And you can see we've got a pitch bend coming in here. And that's what adds that little pitch bend there. There's a tiny variations in it through there. So you just have to listen to the original to make sure that that's all okay. Right, that about wraps it up. Um, a little bit of, finally, just a little bit of automation at the end track. If I just bring out the automation on this, and you can see we do a... We do a little fade out, just right on the end there. 
and take it out of solo, fade out here. There we go, and that's it. So I hope that helps. Use this with the guide that comes with the pack and uh, have fun with this because it's a really great track and uh, quite easy really. But there's a lot of depth in terms of the synthesis. So yeah, good fun. Music tech.